welcome to, today, to today's West End Video Newsletter. My name is Joe LaPiccolo, your host for today's show. Our subject for this week's newsletter will be the West End Boathouse and Community Sailing Club, located on the banks of the Charles River down by the, the Esplanade. Our guests today are longtime members of the Community Boat Club, Frank Levine, Johnny Sanfilippo, and Archie Sparrow Athenas. Frank, would you like to give us a history of uh, this, the boat club? We've taken some clips from the Charles River to remind us a little bit of the places we've been and the places we are. Sailing here for all. This is our motto, and this is the motto that was started by a group of West Enders that contributed their time to encouraging sailing on the Charles River. We're going to show you a few spots where this thing started. It was never this big in the old days, and we're now approaching the Union Boat Club. The Union Boat Club was the first spot after we were, came up from the lower basin around 1936. This is the first place that we set up our fleet of boats after the flooding on the Charles that endangered the sailing program. Joe Lee was the instigator of this. He helped us in the beginning by building boats and teaching us how to sail and uh, encouraging it, us in many, many ways. This is Watsi's landing. You see a couple of tugboats here now, but there used to be a boathouse here. And this was the first place about two blocks from Brighton Street in the West End uh, that uh, sailing first started on the Charles River. First public sailing, encouraged by Joe Lee, followed through by West Enders, and uh, what you have now is a thriving community boat club on the Charles River. We were brought here originally, and the MDC built a boathouse for us, and that was the beginning. You may or may not have heard the term plank holder, plank owner. It's an old nautical term, which means the, the person that's a plank holder really is, a, is one that started something. He owns a piece of the ship. We got together one Sunday with four plank holders, myself, Archie, Johnny, and Timmy Mahoney, who's not with us today. And we talked a little bit about the old days, how community boating got started, and Joe Lee's contribution to it. Well, my name is Frank Levine. We're sitting down here. We're sitting down here at community boating right now. And the reason we're sitting down at community boating is to have for posterity, have for posterity, a story on the beginnings of public sailing on the Charles River and how it was influenced by West Enders. Okay, with us we have three other people that are, as Timmy Mahoney would call them, plank holders. Guys that started off here as 12-year-olders on the river, learned to sail through Joe Lee's program, and have been sailing more or less all our lives. We're now in our later years and before anything happens, we'd like the public to know how this place got started. Uh, I spoke to Archie Athanas, who uh, spoke to me about his connection with the boat club. Archie, would you like to... Uh... All right, my name is this Frank said Archie Athanas. It was Arthur Sparrow in his old days. He called me Archie Athanas. Uh, my name is Arthur Athanas. 
Hodge Hughes, I think. Right. Now let's go back to the uh, Watsies Boat Club, okay. where the, everything started. My name was Arthur Spiro then, it was my maiden name. Uh, how I got involved with the Boat Club was uh, through the West End Community House. I was a, I've been a member of that since I was old. Oh, eight or ten years old. Jolie came down to uh, ask us if we'd like to get off the streets and do something worthwhile. How about building some sailboats and sailing them on the Charles River? We said, great. So we started to build the first two fleet-type boats in the basement of the West End Community House. We called the first one the W-E-C-H, which is, stands for the West End Community House. Boat for organization, the Weckle. The second boat that was built was the 801, which is a, was a club within the club. And uh, I sailed the Weco, and Jack Donovan sailed the 801. And ironically enough, that's how we came in our first regatta in 1937, one and two. I, I had won that race, and Donovan came in second. There were several other boats involved. As I recall, uh, Jolie's <laughs> nephews, Donnie and Kenny Robertson, were, were in that race. I don't recall too many other people, but they're all listed in that uh, account of the race on the, the Globe. Monday Morning Globe featured this uh, first regatta, 1937, which, uh, which uh, there are many other regattas to follow in 37 and 38. And we decided to expand our uh, realm, and we sailed into the basin. Of course, we went uh, very welcome in the basin, and the MDC kept pushing us back to Watsi's Boat Club. And Joe Lee said, what are you guys doing back? I told you to get out in the basin. We told the MDC wouldn't let us. So he led the next foray, and we followed him in, and the, uh, the cops came along and said, Joe, Please, Joe, you know, you're putting us on a spot. Could you go back to the Watsi? And I think he, he, kid, he said, take these river rats with you and go back to Watsi. They wanted to keep this area pristine. The back bay promise wanted pristine. Now get back there. So we persisted, persisted. We finally got a bridge hat, so to speak, at the Union Boat Club. And they were gracious enough to let us have part of that dock, and uh, then, then we relocated there, and we expanded from there to our present site. But it was quite a... Yes, Mr. Levine. Where did you live in the West End? I lived on Brighton, 99 Brighton Street. Uh -huh. I also lived on Spring John, back Street. John, back to the call at 1038. John, back to the call at 1038. Now, uh, Joe Lee also uh, sent out letters to other places. For instance, Timmy Mahoney came from the from the South End, but he automatically became a West Ender after he joined the club. Timmy, you wanna? I'll, I'll go ahead. I'll point the mic at you. Go ahead, Timmy. Uh, my name is Tim Mahoney. At that time, uh, when I was a youngster, I was a uh, member of a settlement house called. South Bay Union, which was part of the South End House uh, group, uh, notice came up on a bulletin board there uh, that anyone interested in learning how to sail and building a boat come down to the carpenter shop on a certain night and uh, they could get involved. So I went down and at that time I met uh, uh, Jim Moreno and uh, Jack Donovan. Uh, so we had a little uh, carpentry class in the, bo in the boys club there and we proceeded to build the boat. And when the boat was finished, it was put on the truck and transported over to Watsi's in the West End. Uh, from there on in, uh, I sailed off of Watsi's and uh, I became a West Ender more or less uh, by adoption. I stopped hanging around the South End and my group more or less became uh, the people that I had met in the boathouse uh, in the West End, Arthur and Frank and uh, the Robinsons and Bill and Paul Ward and uh, Leo Manfredi, 
uh, and Sally Cutlass and countless of other fine kids from the West End. So I started around 1937. Uh, I can remember we used to, uh, when we sailed, the boats had a bamboo mast and a bamboo boom. They didn't have any keels and they didn't have any centerboard. We had lee boards that were slid up and down on brackets on the outside of the boat. Uh, we sailed in what was then called the law, still called the lower basin, and we weren't allowed to sail up in the, the uh, upper basin here uh, until Joe Lee finally got permission from the MDC. And at that point, uh, we moved up to the Union Boathouse dock. Uh, I can also remember, in addition to the uh, individual boats, we built some three-masted schooners, and we used to race them. Uh, uh, to understand what they look like, if you've ever seen these Chinese dragon boats out here on the river, now they were similar to that except that they had three sails and we had a crew of uh, so many people and we sail those against each other. As a matter of fact, uh, I do remember one of them was named after the late Senator from the United States, Senator Levitt Saltenstall, and he came down that day and yeah. christened the boat for us with a bottle of champagne, which we thought was rather nice of Mr. Saltenstall, and it had made the Boston newspaper. How long was called the Hurley? And then another was called the Hurley, right. Uh, you can't say that Joe Lee wasn't political. Uh, <laughs> I, right, I, you know, I do say this much, that uh, when I did join the boat club and I did come over to the West End, I think it was a turning point in my life in the respect that I learned how to sail, which I'm still doing today. Uh, I, like I say, became a West Ender by choice. Uh, when I did uh, get married, and uh, after World War II, I moved up into the West End, up to Myrtle Street. So I became a resident, and besides being a like member that? by choice. Uh, my memories of the West End are very fond of the people that I grew up with. I both uh, in and out of the boat club. I also joined the West End House and played on the basketball team there, the Tigers, with a bunch of young people. But I think that the fact that, uh, as far as my case is concerned, and probably some of the others sitting here, like when, uh, the fact that Joe Lee started this program uh, and pointed us in a new direction because youngsters in back in the 30s in Boston did not sail. You had to have money and live in Marblehead or Salem or down the Cape with, with the Kennedys and that. Uh, I think the idea that he got us into sailing and got us interested in it and the fact that, that, that this boathouse today uh, is standing and the program still goes on, the youngsters can still sail all summer for Darlow. I think that in itself is a fitting tribute to both Mr. Lee and the people that originally started the sailing program in Boston, which was made up mostly of West Enders. We have another West Ender here, John San Felipe. Uh, John? Good afternoon, everybody. Nice day down the boat out here, like many other days I can remember. I grew up in the West End, and I lived on a street called Brighton Street, parallel to Charles, a stone's throw from the boathouse. Yet, I came a little later, seeing these wonderful gentlemen sitting around me here, and uh, I think I got involved in the boathouse uh, somewhere in the middle of the uh, middle 40s, and uh, it took a little more guts for me to get into the boat itself even though I was down here. But then one day I finally put my foot into it, and uh, I think it's the greatest thing that's happened down here in this river here. Kept a lot of the young kids out of trouble, as a matter of fact, from the West End. And uh, it's come a long way from the five or six boats they had that they used to cut up to Joe Lee's in the wintertime and have repaired. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to recollect a lot of the old timers that we're here, like Tom has mentioned, the Manfredi's and the Rosenberg and Cutlets and Spiro and Frank Levine, and a lot of wonderful memories. Although I don't get down here like I did, it's probably a lot to do with the parking problems these days. <laughs> we used to walk, we didn't drive down here. Uh, I think I remember living on Chow Street uh, a few years later, and I was able to cross Starwell Drive and there was a light at the foot of Pinckney Street. Joe Lee used to put his pobo stick out there and shut the traffic down when he had to make his call. <laughs> and you hear a lot of squealing brakes. <laughs> Thanks, John. Uh, 
check something about the, uh, when we were at the Union Boat Club, we also built what was called gondolas. Does anyone here yeah, hear you? Yeah. <laughs> these were, of course, these again were home-built boats. We'd had nothing but home-built boats. And these resembled the gondolas of, uh, what's that place? Venice. 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 Uh, Joe would have us uh, yo, uh, sing, uh, sing Neapolitan songs because we took out customers for, I think it was a quarter or 50 cents a couple. Uh, they were right yeah. down the steps. Yes. Down at the steps by the hatch <laughs> shell. We, yeah. would park, we would park the gondolas yeah. Yeah. and had a lantern on them. Yeah. And, and stand in front of the gondolas. <laughs> I wanna and and hustle and hustle people into the gondolas yeah. to it, finance our program. It, this is how we finance it. Incidentally, ahead, John. Incidentally, uh, I just re it's just bringing back some memories again. Uh, they had some beetle boats down here at one time, and I think if I remember, Mr. Roberts' play was playing at the Colonial. And John Forsythe, Jackie Cooper, and a few other actors came down and took out the Beetle Boats for the day. It, so they got good, uh, they, they heard about it. <laughs> out of Tannins. <laughs> Were those the first store bought in boats, the Beatles, the first fleet? No, the uh, first the fleet mahogany boat. Oh, they was called? mahogany boat. Mahogany. Right. So they were, Walter yeah. Wood designed those. Like Walter Jack Wood. Wood. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, Jack, Jack Wood, Wood. excuse they me. Had, Jack they Wood. had a huge gunnel they could sit on. Yeah, and right. Very right. comfortable. Yeah. Very comfortable gun. Uh, but but they were they were too expensive and too fancy. Yeah. Yeah. We we yeah. preferred the boats that we built ourselves. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, do, do you remember the winter headquarters we had on Hanover Street? Does anybody remember the winter headquarters we had on Hanover Street? Well, that goes Street? way back. Frank. That's what I'm That's talking way about. Back, way back. 35, 36, somewhere. 35 or 36. 36 yeah. Right next to the casino theater. Yeah. Now we used the the, the west uh, the, the push cart, the Haymarket Square push carts to transport these these boats <laughs> back down. The river, right? Oh. The ones you, you're involved with. <laughs> I asked Joe. I said, "How did you get the boats? Uh, how did you get the boats up to up to Hanover Street to get them repaired?" And he said, "Oh, there's a man on Sudbury Street that used to rent push carts, <laughs> and that's the way that's the way we got the boats up to up to the headquarters." Then, uh, do you remember the Columbus Day parades? Do you remember the oh, Columbus Day Parade yeah. when we had the schooners, parade, but, uh, the schooners down Hanover Street on, on, on floats? Uh, we had we made floats out of the yeah. schooners. They had red, white, and green sails. Yes. And they they we pushed them down Hanover Street in the middle of a of, of the feast, the Columbus Day feast. Do you remember that? I remember yeah. one year. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was. Go ahead, John. Oh, uh, just want to add one more thing to the Beetle Boats. If I remember correctly, they were as beamy as they were in Lent almost. You right. can lay across them. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't go anywhere. <laughs> they went sideways more they went forward. <laughs> now, back in uh, 38, we had this, this great big hurricane here in this area. And I recall that day, before it came in full force, I was sailing the, the, uh, out of Union Boat Club uh, in, in, with the Leeboard type boats we had then. The original, the original boats at Watsies were plank planks with a fixed, fixed keel, fixed rudder, and tiller. Now they got away. We got away from that. We put Leeboards on these. Uh, they were built of plywood, the ones we used at the uh, Union Boat Club. We were sailing one of those, and the wind hit 30 or 40 knots. And I, I got back just in time because it start, that afternoon it, was start, it really started to blow. <coughs> Luckily, I didn't capsize, but that was, it was the beginnings of the hurricane of 38 around here. Does anyone remember? Of course, we all remember Maybe that. you have to get into this. Maybe you can recollection for that. Well, maybe can we, I'm trying to recall the boats that have pontoons on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They also yeah, have yeah. pontoons, too. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're optional. I asked you about them. Yes, they were optional, pontoons. But, uh, some people liked them, some didn't. They had, we had pontoons on either side, then we had pontoons on just one side. I don't know how we balance the other <laughs> <laughs> Now, these are all Jolie's brainchilds. Yeah. The but, reason uh, he had the pontoons on there was that the boats had not been designed correctly. This particular group of boats hadn't, hadn't been designed correctly. And he, he put the pontoons on to uh, sort of compensate for the bad design. That's, that's what it was. They were too tippy. That's what it was. They were too tippy. Yeah, they tippy. were quite a challenge without yeah, the right, pontoons. Right, right, right. Okay, we we're ready to yeah. Pretty much ready to go. One more from Johnny Sanfilippo. Uh, 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 this 
may be a little spin-off from the boathouse, but I think uh, Joey uh, introduced a very famous boat that we took out many a night in the Charles River and sing some sea chants. Which goes, and, uh, which goes back a number of years too, which was a very favorite part of the, uh, it was, it was some, a lot of flavor from the boathouse would, right. would, would get onto this thing and, uh, and have a, quite a night. I think Joe even redesigned that boat a little bit. <laughs> well, when you talk about the social, the social activities at community boating, you can say that, as John says, it's a spin-off, it's a spin-off from the days that we used to, in the evening, hang around the dock, and the boys and girls would talk and meet and, each other and laugh. <laughs> and, 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 and. Okay, gentlemen. And well, also, uh, one, uh, one more we, injection. We would go one more injection. Of, after All right. the sailing portion of it, we were the original, before it became immensely popular in the end thing, mm -hmm. we used to attend the concerts at the Shell, the original old tin Shell there. Yeah. Now, uh, 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 I think if you've seen the air, uh, the different shows or you've read articles in the paper, uh, out of the original, very small beginnings of Joe Lee's original program that started in the West End and at War uh, we have this boathouse today, which is the oldest, most continuous, and probably most successful public sailing program in the United States. As a matter of fact, for many, many years, it was the only public sailing program in the United States. And people from other parts of the country would come down here to look at the operation over for a week with the idea of going back to their portion of the country and start a program similar to this, which they have today in Spokane, Washington, San Diego, Florida, and various other places. But this program here is the granddaddy of them all. It's the old, and like I say, probably most successful program. And when I think those of us who sail down here still can look back at the orig origins of this club and see that the youngsters today who are the same age as we were when we first started can come down here and sail in this program for a dollar for the full season. I think that in itself is enough of a, uh, how would I put the word? Uh, Seven. What? Seven. Incentive and also uh, uh, it, uh, when you, uh, you, you look at the program, that in itself says that what we started originally was well worth it. There was another boat back at Watsi that uh, uh, we call a sailing dory. And uh, I don't know if anyone remembers the sailing dory. Yes, I remember. Yeah. We had three of them. We, uh, we, we made harbor trips with the sailing dory and uh, we'd pick up some pulp. And we drink half the coke and fill the rest of the coke bottle with rum, and this would keep us floating the the, the Boston Harbor. And by the time we got back to Watsies, we were pretty well seasoned sailors <laughs> in more ways than one. I recall one instant where George Rosenberg was swinging a bamboo pole and missing Don Jack Donovan's head by a couple of inches. And he said, George, you, you see how close? And Donovan would say, ha, he never touched me. So when things like that, you know, we, 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 uh, we, we had a lot of fun in those days. We, just, we, we didn't have too many rules. We sailed at night. We didn't, uh, we didn't care about this thing or that. We cruised the, the old Polish park, which is the science area now. Uh, and uh, we looked, looked the girls over and called, come on down, we'll give you a ride. Of course, we had a few takers, but we had a lot of fun in those days. We're back at the studio now. This is a couple of weeks later, and uh, I'm sure we have a few loose ends that we'd like to tie up, and Archie, Archie would be able to explain a few of the locations of the early days of the boat club. How about that, Archie? Uh, I'm Archie, a famous Spiro, Arthur, take take what you will there. Uh, I'm no, I was known as Arthur Spiro back in the West End. I lived in the West End between 1925 and 1940. I lived on Spring Street, Barton Court, and, all, and lastly, Brighton Street. Many, many people wondered what, where the West End was. Uh, the, roughly between Mass Mass General Hospital and the North End. This is a street.
street map of the West End, if you can focus on that. And uh, this is a photograph of the lower end of the Charles River, where the locks are. The beginnings of the boat club took place at Watsy's Landing. And uh, Joe Lee started all this. He t asked us kids if we wanted to uh, build some boats and do something worthwhile. And we said, yes, we would. And this is how it all started. We built some uh, homemade sailboats from the West End, and many other communities joined in. This appeared in the Boston Globe in 1937, in August. It was the first regatta of 16 homemade sailboats. The reason I'm showing it is because I won the race. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this was one of many, many uh, races that we had at the lower end of the Charles River. We finally got a foothold on the basin by uh, sailing in there, and of course the MDC didn't want us to in that area, but Jolie insisted we uh, continue sailing into that area. And uh, we finally got a foothold, a uh, bridgehead if you will, at the Union Boat Club, and they were gracious enough to uh, let us have part of their dock. And a couple of years later, the uh, present site was built, Low Granite Building. Now the Low Granite Building was, was built close to the Longfellow Bridge. And this is an article that appeared in the, uh, one of the Boston papers at the time, 1940 or 41, I believe, that was built. Thank you. Joe Lee had, <coughs> Joe Lee had just gotten through it with a project that he had been very interested in in economics. And he was casting about for something to do. And at that time, he lived up on the hill, and he used to look at the river. And this was in the early 30s. And he looked at the river, and he'd say, look at all that good wind gone to waste. There must be some way to harness it, and some way to get the people interested in sailing on the Charles River. And at an interview I had with Joe, this is, this is how it got started. This is how it got started. John, you spoke about the beetle boats. Maybe you would like to uh, elaborate a little bit. <coughs> well, in our earlier interview uh, several weeks ago down at the boathouse, uh, I talked about uh, about how the boat maneuvered that didn't maneuver that well, really. And it, uh, why don't you turn around and show 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 the camera? Is, yeah. is, this boat here is, is called the Beetle Boat, and it it sli it slid backwards or uh, sideways much more than it did forward. It had some disadvantages, but it was a comfortable boat, a comfortable boat to uh, if you want to take a nap on it. <laughs> okay. That's it pretty much, and we want to thank you very much for staying with us and listening to the history.